Good morning, folks. Tomorrow apparently begins International Climate Week. The observers shall behave accordingly. We've also got science fights and other updates today as we start at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun with slight activity at the southern incoming active region. Key thing also that the northern filament stayed stable so far. The incoming active region on the south definitively has sunspots beneath it and is producing small solar flares that might look like big spikes on the X-ray flux, but it's low C-class range. And the solar wind is calmed back down after the one-two punch that left us in a minor geomagnetic storm status two nights ago should be calm today. So let's go right to a fun one. The lightning we see at volcanic eruptions is part of an extremely dense upward current more so even than thunderstorms. A nice nod to the other non-low pressure mechanisms for returning global electric circuit upward, volcanoes and quakes, they do it too. Folks, nature journals are dealing with a couple science fights. The moon formed early, they say, but then these guys came in and said, nah, -uh, no, it didn't. And then the original authors came back and were like, yeah, huh, it did. Then another team came in trying to map China's lander images into landscapes and got met with a chorus of no, you're just using data artifacts. You aren't doing lunar stratigraphy. And then the original authors came back and were like, yeah, yeah, huh, we are. Just aces all around their nature. Well played. Folks, I'm seeing a lot of papers on electromagnetic ion cyclotron waves and different plasma populations in the upper reach. They are raging forward in this field, but none of them expected this one. First observation of a doubly charged oxygen-driven emic wave. Maybe our technology is getting better, or maybe Earth's magnetic field is just showing us new things by the week as it undergoes its modern excursion. Anyway, climate week. Let's head into it knowing that the high end of the ocean projections are as pitifully unrealistic as those for the atmosphere. Same thing we saw with their cutting down the high end sensitivities in the air is what's happening to the oceans here. Speaking of which, let's look at the oceans back in time and folks, someone figured out, hey, wasn't the ocean much lower during the last glacial maximum? How could it have held so much carbon at those lower levels? Smart cookie there. Turns out it's impossible, which means that during the last glacial maximum, there was as much carbon in the atmosphere as there was in the 1950s, which is an enormous slap in the face to the carbon hockey stick nonsense. And last but not least, showing the problems only helps if you show some of the solutions as well. Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, also called Atlantic multidecadal variability, is powerful enough to control the entire Pacific climate, a definitive stamp on similar previous studies, and of course, the Atlantic is dominated by the sun and solar activity. This is from chapter 4 of our textbook where you can also find the control of the North Atlantic oscillation, and if the sun controls the thing that controls the Pacific, well... As most of you know, the return to classrooms this school year means our textbook is sold out, but the PDF is still available at the link below the video here today. Trade-off for the electronic copy is that it is searchable by keyword. You don't have to go hunting for what you seek. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.